Okay, welcome back everybody. In this short tutorial, I'm going to talk a little bit about creating elevations within Google Earth to really help support the, uh, the preliminary survey of a project. So I'm going to turn on some different things here and talk about what I've already created so far and then we'll recreate some of these elements and I'll uh, walk you through the steps of actually getting these specific elevations. So um, what we're looking at here is we have several different markers. If I open up my places here on my left and I can turn all of these, uh, especially all on, off and on, I'm actually going to add another folder here and just call this elevations. And so from these elevations, I don't know if I can actually drag all of them. I can. There we go drag all of them underneath there and so now I just have my elevations and then I have this untitled polygon here and what I wanted to do with this polygon was actually to just provide a plane based off an absolute elevation so it is not tracking anything in terms of ground height or anything else all it is is this is just a flat elevation that's exactly at the altitude of 92 meters so um, and by using absolute I know that for a fact it's uh, going to be as flat as possible within this system, just based off, uh, you know, it's drawing a plane. If we had done clamp to ground, um, you could see that if we had elevated this up or relative to ground, it would have been uh, based off individual points at each of those locations. So that's not what we want in this case, because that can be varied. We want absolute, and we want that at 92 is essentially the the cut that I wanted to use to really talk about um, uh, the slope of this particular roof. So, because um, what's nice about this is it's just a nice visual indicator to show that, hey, we've got these points that are above uh, 92, and we have points that are going to be below it, which essentially is anything that's cut in red there, um, or with red as a shading over the surface. So you can actually see in some of these areas where you got these uh, built up crickets. You can see how everything on the edges is kind of flowing away from uh, that lower elevation. But it's a nice, uh, you know, quick way of understanding what the uh, the general elevations are on, on this particular roof. So obviously over here we have some high points. I actually dropped in some markers here that were produced in the same type of fashion, but instead of with the plane, is with this uh, place mark the little pin icon here. And so if we look at the altitude here, we can actually see that this is it's actually set to 93. Um, but one thing to note is when you grab these elevations, so yes, right now, or actually when you, uh, if you want this to track your elevation with your, uh, with your cursor, you can turn on track cursor height. And so as I take this, you'll see that that value here under altitude is actually gonna change. Um, but one thing to note is within Google Earth, um, the altitudes are always working based off uh, uh, metric system. So it's all based off meters and, and there is no uh, partial meters. It's just 92, 93, 94, 91, whatever it is. It does not give you any decimal points there. But what's nice is we can actually look down here on the um, this location right here and it actually gives us a live feedback in wherever the, the mouse is hovered, it'll give you a live feedback of your elevation there. So that's how I'm actually reading these points for 302, 304, and so on. So when I'm up at this highest point here, I can see down there at the bottom, it's 304. As I move this way, 303, 302, 301. And so this is giving me kind of a real-time feedback of what those elevations are based off the, uh, the mapped um, object or map surfaces here within Google Earth. So one thing to note, obviously, is that this is only as accurate as the mapping that was performed. So it's not um, going to be 100%, but it's um, it's a nice, clean way of just getting a reference and being able to kind of stake out some of these critical uh, uh, elevations and just quickly understand the, uh, the, the sloping and elevations on your roof. So, okay, I'm actually gonna turn off this roof cup for the moment. And just to show you again, the workflow for how we create those points, I'm actually gonna be looking now for, well, let's just pick up a new point. We can just let it hang out in the middle for now. Um, I always name these at the very end um, after I've understanding or after I understand the location of it, but let's just go to our uh, altitude settings now and just go to at, uh, absolute 
and by default it's just set to uh, zero which is actually way down below the earth and so what we want to do is we just want to extend to ground and track cursor height and so now we can take this element and we can just drag it around and um, you know we can drop it and move our position um, scroll in and out rotate around and as long as we have our settings pulled up this is an editable object for us so okay so now what I'm looking for is essentially I just want to kind of mark some of the low points so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of uh, fly around and I'm looking for really potential locations of where the roof drains might be and I can't see in 100% but to me this looks a little bit like a, a roof drain and an overflow drain so I'm just gonna snap to right at that point here and I can see that that's at 300 if I start panning out further um, I can see that that number is going to be going up to 301, 301, and I can kind of just drag it back and forth and get an idea by looking down at this value right here where potentially that, that line is. So I'm going to just mark this as a low point, and I'm just going to call this 300 feet, and I'm going to call this uh, RD for a roof drain. And um, with that, I'm just going to hit OK and so there we go so now we've saved that point very useful for uh, just for reference and um, yeah so I could actually just if I didn't want to go through the steps of recreating that point I could actually just take it and do a control C control D and now I have a second one here over in my uh, my uh, my places and so now with that second one all I need to do to edit it is just go back into my properties here and take this point and now we're free to take it and edit it around and move it to any location that we want so if I'm looking at this here I might want to know what the elevation is in the corner of this building because obviously that's a drain point and I can actually see if I'm hovering right over it it's giving me 301 so I can actually just call this 301 and just add that for reference and you'll see here I've actually added in a few others already and what I was doing here was I was actually adding like this 307 that's the elevation on top of that parapet 325 is obviously the top of that uh, roof structure um, and so yeah with just simply kind of navigating around here we can take these elements copy them paste them move them around and snap them Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is you got to have this on track cursor height. So, um, in order to get it to jump up and down, you yeah, that's one thing you got to go back and change. Even though if you created that previous element with track cursor height, when you copy and paste them, you got to make sure that that element is checked. So, like for example, right here on top of this parapet, we're at 312. So I'm going to rename this to be 312. Hit OK, and then we can take this, copy, paste, go into our properties. Go to altitude and we'll notice that even though we had it saved in the previous object the new object uh, automatically gets unchecked so i'm going to check that again and then drag it and uh, keep moving along here and kind of pick out some of my uh, critical elevations here so right here it looks like we're at 309 for that sub roof element or sorry that lower pitch so 309 go to properties again and I would bet if I get a little clearer view here, I have 307 measured over on this side. Oh, the other thing is I gotta check that, of course. Um, is it still 307? It is. Okay, fine. I'm gonna keep moving. Um, what's this point right here? 300. 300. So I might put a note on there for just understanding my elevation. So 300. So that, it was the same on both sides, but you can see as I go through this, I'm just picking up kind of the critical elevations that I might use as a reference when I go to actually create these roof structures to so try to get it as close as possible. Um, so with that, I could just continue on and just create create more and more different points, but um, I think we could stop right here on, in terms of uh, just how to create those place marks and um, yeah hopefully you learned a few little tips and tricks for uh, working with Google Earth and creating different uh, survey elevations uh, it's very useful when you're at an early stage in a project just for getting a quick feedback of uh, um, 
the, the general structure of the project. And so I use this all the time on pretty much any project that I'm working on. So, okay, with that, I'm going to end this video and uh, make sure to check out the next one. i um, not sure what this topic will be, but uh, I'll uh, try to make it interesting and fun and informative. Okay, bye-bye.